Hello everybody, I am Bolt Matrix, and today we are going to be making that fossilizer combiner that everybody's been talking about. Now, nothing official has come out from Hasbro other than the fan first Friday uh, from a couple of weeks ago. We actually saw the thing, and this combination is going to be going off of what the community of Transformers fans has kind of literally pieced together. To get started, we are going to literally just rip these guys apart into their pile of bones. Yeah, that literally that's the first thing you do. Just rip them apart into all of their sub pieces. And it's important that you pull them completely apart. And I didn't realize I was doing Ractonite off camera. Whoops. And yes, all of the bits need to get pulled apart. All of them, except Ractonite's head. Leave the horns on. You don't really need the horns anywhere else in the final combine mode. And here we go. Now, to start off, we are going to just start with the legs because, well, we need a decent foundation. Not that we're going to get one for the dino mode. To start off with, grab Ractonite's two rear legs, then grab the rib cage for. Paleo T Rex and the rib cage for Wing Finger, the upper thigh legs for Paleo T Rex, and then the head for Paleo T Rex. That thing. The first thing we're going to do is pull out Paleo T Rex's robot head, just put it off to the side, collapse the dino head as much as possible, and then put that off to the side. Then grab one of Raptonite's legs, preferably, well, the left one is going to be the one. You're going to tell which legs are going to be which by the fact that the pin or the screw holes are pointing towards the inside. So we take that. This is going to be the left leg of the dinosaur or the of the mode. So we'll take wing fingers um, section here and just plop that on to form the outer leg like that, and then grab. Where'd it go? Then, then grab the one leg from Paleo T-Rex, peg it in and flip it up so that the pins are pointing in and then flip it down and we have one leg done. Then we'll repeat that on the other side. Oops, had that turned around. So grab a leg, put the rib cage up top like that. Grab the lower leg, grab the thigh, peg that in, and fold it up, and then we have two legs, and both of these will then be able to peg into the dino skull, like so. And that's it for the legs, except then well, <laughs> almost it for the legs. We just got to straighten everything out. And then we are supposedly supposed to peg in the, the pterodactyl head into this opening back here, but we can do that later. Next, grab Paleo T-Rex's lower dino feet. These will become the hands. And then get wing fingers dino arms as well. And we will then peg we will then peg the dino hands into these. And just be careful when you do this because I end up pinching my finger every time I do it. Unfortunately, Paleo T-Rex's uh, stupid claw or stupid uh, pins are way too loose. So then we've got some upper arms ready to go. And then we get going. So to start off with, take the I guess this would be the breastbone. I like to turn the section here at the back that's the dark brown around 180. Then peg in the connectors for the for the feet and fold them back. And then what are these going to peg into? Well, they're actually going to peg into the hands. And the hands will peg in on the bottom and we want to turn the wrists so that they will actually be able to peg into something else a little bit later. The only real issue I have here is this is super loose, 
The other thing you can do is turn it upside down. This is what we end up with, this setup. This will actually peg into nothing right now, but there's something that will peg into the back over here. And that are these components. These will peg in up here to these, and they'll fold out like this. And And then they'll stick out like that. And then these sections from the Ractonite's feet will peg into them. And just getting all of this lined up is a pain. There's nothing, nothing I can do to make it any better. And this will form the chest like that. Now, what else can we do here? Well, Let's get the Ractonite's, let's get Ractonite's head and get that down out of the way and then come back to the pterosaur, unpeg that. And this will actually peg into the opening of Ractonite's mouth to form the giant fossilizer combiner head. And then this pegs in up here but I have found that it's best to just remove the crest from the Styracosaurus, like that. You don't have to. It can be done where this pegs in, but I have found it just works better if you don't, because then you can actually, you know, pose the darn thing. And now we come to the combining of the bits. So the legs and the chest peg in like that, and then you stand the figure up, and then you peg in the arms into the hand holes up there, or you can peg them in up here. You can do either one. Either way, he's gonna look real scary, no matter what you do. And ladies and gentlemen, here we have the unofficial combined mode for the fossilizers. I am calling him Gravestone. And from the outset, it looks really cool. It legitimately looks awesome until you start trying to pose it because all of these joints and Paleo T-Rex is the main problem here. All of my Paleo T-Rex's joints are very loose and that translates into a very loose figure. Also, Ractonite's pins are getting loose already. So you can pose him. It does have quite a bit of posability, but Mine just falls apart very easily. Also, using Ractonite's head as the main connector between the two sections, I think is a major mistake. It does not offer any stability. That ball joint is much too loose, and he's constantly doing a Quasimodo or a hunchback look. You do have the ability to get some decent poses, but again... The dang thing doesn't stay together well enough for a Mac to actually pose all that well. You can try, but he just falls apart. Also, you're left with a giant bundle of bits. Now, one addition to the figure that I make in order to increase the deadliness and the stability is first, add wing fingers, fingers to the tip of the chest to give him a little bit more of a cohesive look, and they are poseable, and then add some of Ractonite's bits as a third leg, essentially. Just stick it right off the back. And then we can add Wing Finger's head to the back, like that, to add to the bone look. And then we're left with uh, a bunch of stuff that I'm sure we can do something with. Using Paleo T-Rex's tail and the section from Wing Finger's hips is Really the only weapon I've been able to come up with, considering the stuff that we have. For a size comparison, here is Beast Megatron, and here is Grimlock in Dino Mode. It's a big figure. I mean, it's three deluxe class figures. Now, overall, I'm not too thrilled with this. I like the idea. I think the idea is sound, 
just the joints are a mess on my figures. It just does not stand up on its own, at least easily. Overall, I'm going to wait until Hasbro releases something official, or maybe Takaro releases something official. Either way, it's, it's fine as is, as long as you, you know, don't try to move it much. So folks, let me know what you think of this fossilizer combiner down in the comments. Did I get anything wrong, or would you do anything different? Also, go ahead and check out my friends Cheetamus and Grimlockamus over on Twitter. Just scroll through their tweets, because they both have bought multiple versions of each one of these figures and come up with combiners for each Ractonite, Paleo T-Rex, and Wingfinger on their own that are way better than this thing. As always, I have been Will Matrix. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.